Hi there, welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie. I'm Julie DiMatteo from thepaperpixie.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the US. And welcome to tonight's live broadcast. I'm streaming live to both YouTube and Facebook, so hello to both of my audiences. As you're rolling on in, say hello and where you're watching from. I'll stop and say hello to a few folks before we jump into it. Hi, Milt, I haven't talked to you in so long. Welcome. Hi, Patty, Louise, Susan. Susan, I just got your email, thank you. Hi, Bonnie. Let's see. I see Leslie and Tisha, Kathy, Barbara. Welcome, everybody. There's my Facebook friends. I'm seeing them come in. Hello, Jackie, Myrtle, Melanie, Robin, hello. Happy Wednesday. It's hump day, right? We made it halfway through the week. Oh, I know, Julie, how cool is that? Hard to believe it's been a, well, that's not cool. You're probably talking about the pandemic, but yeah, it's been a year. <laughs> oh, a year, you're talking about your anniversary. See, my brain is fried. <laughs> Hi, Dabber Do and Karen, Ginny, Loretta, Nancy, Tilly, welcome. Tonight, we're gonna be doing products from the Sand and Sea product suite. If you fall in love with this suite tonight, which I have a feeling you will, it's currently, or parts of it are on low inventory, so I would not hesitate. <laughs> Everything is still available, at least it was as of just before this broadcast, um, but we are gonna be doing a card and a 3D holder. You guys seem to love that. So here is the card, as it's crooked. And then here, it's a mini treat holder, you know me, but this one is really, really easy to resize, and I'll teach you kind of how to do that, okay? So that's what we're doing tonight. Let's do a couple of housekeeping items. It's a new month, so my new host code for February is M2WPBZUT. It's always funny to see what the host code turns out as. So that's the February host code. Please use that host code on orders under $150 with me. If your order is $150 or more, do not use the host code. I do have a monthly free gift for orders of $75 or more, and that's the Blackberry Bliss Striped Ribbon. Um, I think it's on low inventory, but I'm hoping by the time I order the new um, those ribbons for February orders that um, those will be ready to ship out in March. Um, let's see, what else can I tell you? My blog, if you're new, is thepaperpixie.com. There's that. And if you don't already have a demonstrator or it's been a while since you've ordered with me and you'd like free copies of the current catalogs, you can submit a catalog request at thepaperpixie.com slash happy mail. And I'd be happy to get those in the mail to you. I think, is there anything else? A couple things, we, it's the middle of celebration. We've got one more month left through February 28th where you can earn free stuff for purchases of $50 or more. There's also a couple $100 level items as well. Um, so that goes through February 28th. There's three great ways to get free stuff. That's the first one. So free with $50 or $100 purchases. Then there's an awesome punch Oh, what's it called? Punch Party. It's a host stamp set. That's for orders of $300 or more. Or if you get some friends together and do a little workshop, um, $300 orders or more will, will um, earn that pro um, Punch Party <laughs> stamp set for free. And the really great way to take advantage of Celebration is to purchase the starter kit. The starter kit is $99 plus taxes if applicable in your state. Free shipping, which is a 10% additional discount. But you get to choose up to $125 in product, so product of your choice, up to $125, plus you're gonna get $57.50 worth of designer series paper. These are five of the color families, a total of 200 sheets of six by six. So that's exclusive to the new upcoming annual catalog that comes free with any starter kit purchase now through February 28th. The last thing that launched yesterday is the Hey Chick and Hey Birthday Chick bundles. Hey Birthday Chick is a stamp set in the mini catalog. They've now released coordinating dies for that stamp set and they've brought Hey Chick back from, I think two celebrations ago, including some coordinating dies as well. So check those out at stampinup.com. You can always go to my online store by visiting thepaperpixie.com slash shop, okay? 
I'm gonna flip the camera, show you a couple of pieces of artwork from the kids as I always try to do. And then we're gonna jump right into the projects. I think I'm gonna switch it up and do the card first, okay? So let me flip. There we go. <laughs> All right, so they had fun coloring. We just keep printing off sheets on the printer to keep them occupied, right? We do what you can. So this is Lily's, and we just realized right before that it's a whole bunch of things that start with the letter M. <laughs> we had no idea. I was like, ooh, is that M for mom? But yeah, monkey, moon, milk. Anyways, this is Nolan. That is Doc McStuffins. And we've got a choo-choo train. He's just starting to try to color within the lines. And something from, looks like Star Wars. <laughs> What's that? Is it Star Wars? No, it's Legos. Oh, Legos. Yeah, our kids love Legos. So um, Nolan is five. Lily is about to be eight. Her birthday is this month, which I cannot believe. So that's that. Okay, let's start with the card. I absolutely love this suite of products. I am dreaming of the beach like Nolan was last week. He drew a picture of the beach. Dreaming of the beach. So friends are like seashells. You collect them along the way. And I almost never do this with my cards, but I decided to stamp the inside and it says you are un unique and completely amazing. So we'll make that. This is pretty easy to make. I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks this is actually going to be using a lot of the products from the suite and you will find the sand and sea suite on page 40 or starting on page 40 of the mini catalog but we've got a stamp a set of dies a 3d embossing folder these awesome opal rounds stickers which we're going to use today as well the pearlescent specialty paper and this beautiful designer series paper so pages 40 and 41 and then i think you can see even more detail on page 42 okay what are 150 stars oh i think that you just gave me 150 cents <laughs> um the, but i think facebook gives um free stars to people so i think that's what you did um carol's demos cannot buy that six by six paper now they were able to in december but that option is not available to demos now but that paper will be in the new annual catalog and demos will be able to pre-order in April. I just don't know if that paper will be on the pre-order. We'll find out in April what the pre-order looks like. All right, I should have left that page open because I know I'm gonna forget what stuff is called because that's what happens to me. All right, so we're gonna start with a card base that is Sahara Sand. That's one of the coordinating colors in this suite. And I don't think I have it out. Oh, it's right here. This is my little swatch book for my upline, Brian King. But we've got Blushing Bride, Flirty Flamingo, Melon Mambo, Sahara Sand, Seaside Spray, and So Saffron. But just a really pretty, we've got um, patterns and then we've got this really cool, I think it's watercolor with some salt, sea salt technique on it. I love the muted colors of this. So we're gonna use this blue sort of swish. Um, so let's see, what are we gonna start with? <laughs> um, I'm gonna switch so I can see your comments just in case I see comments that pop up. Brian, my husband is over here uh, watching for your questions. So he'll be popping that up. Um, all right, let's start with, we'll make a big mess first. So I've got a piece of Sahara sand that measures, Jennifer, good question. I actually haven't ordered them yet but you've challenged me, <laughs> so stay tuned. Um, I did pre-order during uh, this month, starting yesterday, demonstrators were able to order a brand new suite of products, I guess, Butterfly Bouquet. It's a demo only pre-order this month, but it's gonna be an early release that launches next month for customers. But if you want it now, you can actually add it to a starter kit order. It's beautiful, but yeah. Hang tight for that hey chick. I knew somebody was gonna ask me that. <laughs> so Sahara Sand, four and a quarter by 11. I've scored it at five and a half inches in half. So we'll fold it and I know you're gonna ask. I score and then when you score, you create a valley. I turn that valley score line into a mountain. That's how I do that. And then I'm just gonna come in and burnish. Okay, so that's the card base. Now, if on your paper trimmer, you get a little bit of a raised edge with the paper trimmer, I just come in and smooth that out just with my bone folder. 
and that'll look like you never trimmed it on a paper trimmer. Just kind of smooths those edges out. I'm gonna make a mess over here, okay? <laughs> I keep encroaching on Brian's space. At some point, he's not gonna be able to fit over here. Then I've got a piece of seaside spray that measures three and three quarters by five. Again, these are like my typical go-to card measurements because I love that little, I'm smoothing off the edges again. I love that little 16th of an inch piece of cardstock that fits behind the designer series paper. The designer series paper is cut to three and five eighths by four and seven eighths. So I'm gonna do the easy part and we're just gonna put glue these two pieces together. And then I'm gonna show you the magic with that die and 3D embossing folder. And I love liquid glue because I, especially for layers like this where I've only got a 16th of an inch, I can slide that right into place and it gives me a little bit of extra time to get it lined up just right. I'm then going to glue this down to our card base because we're going to get dimension on this card from other places. Okay. And again, the liquid glue, I can kind of slide things around. Uh, Kristen, great question. Most of them are. Um, I'm trying to think. All the pattern ones are with the exception of we've got a new specialty paper. It's not really new anymore, but in the mini catalog, it's a foil specialty paper. But So it's white on one side, but... Um, it's the pattern's just one-sided, but most of them are double-sided, which is always so hard to decide which side you're gonna use. <laughs> it's hard to put glue <laughs> on um, the other side of the paper. All right, let's, I'm gonna do a little bit of stamping first, okay? And then we're gonna bring in the standard stamp and cut and emboss machine, and we'll kind of cut the die cut pieces at the same time. That's for the 3D project. Okay, I have got, let's see. You're thinking of getting only the embossing folder. Karen, that is a tough one. I might answer that question for you after you see what we're gonna do. <laughs> Cause that embossing folder paired with the set of dies is incredible. So, um, but anyways, I'll show you what we're gonna do. So I've got a piece of basic white. This measures four by five and a quarter. That's my typical size for putting an insert on the inside of the card, okay? That gives us an eighth of an inch border around the edge. And I am gonna do a little bit of stamping on the inside. I'm looking for my, just got this tiny piece of grid paper from the Stamparatus. We're gonna use Seaside Spray and then this big shell, and I did, haven't shown you the stamp set yet. Friends are like seashells. We're gonna use this shell. And you are unique and completely amazing. Now this is at 75%, what you're seeing here. The stamps are much bigger, okay? We're gonna use For You, but that's on the 3D project. And friends are like seashells. You collect them along the way. Now Knight of Navy is not a coordinating color, but it goes, it pairs so well with Seaside Spray. And we'll put that off to the side. Let's start with our big seashell. I'm gonna stamp this off once so we get a real subtle seashell. And then I'm just gonna put that here in the lower left corner. This is our inside piece. I think we're done with the seaside spray for now. Knight of Navy. You are unique and completely amazing. And I'm actually gonna put that towards the bottom. Something different. So that's gonna be our inside, okay? I'm gonna put that off to the side just so that Knight of Navy dries. And then I'm gonna stamp the front sentiment. Did I get that inked up enough? I think so. All right, so that's the sentiment. Now we can do some die cutting and stuff with the stamp and cut and emboss machine. 
Now this set of dies, you're going to need the standard stamp and cut and emboss machine because this giant die is not going to fit in the mini. Okay. And if you look in the catalog, it will tell you which sets of dies. There'll be a little starburst. I think it is that tell or a circle that says, um, which fit in the mini machine. This would not be one of them. So let's bring out the big, big, it's so funny after using the mini for a few times, this thing looks huge, doesn't it? <laughs> All right. So we've got this It's going to take up the whole screen. Let's start by die cutting our sentiment first. So I've got cutting plate one, then the thin die adapter, which is number two, one cutting plate three. We've got our piece of paper that we want to die cut. Let me get that lined up here. I'm probably blocking that with my arm. I'm excited about tonight's projects. The little 3D thing is so cute. It's a triangular explosion box is what I'm calling it. All right, so that's the sentiment. This die came from Tasteful Labels, and I don't know if you can see that embossed edge. Got little paper fuzzies on there, but I love that, just that tiny little bit of detail, okay? Now, let's get the mess out of the way. We're gonna change up some of the plates here. I'm removing plate number two. Am I doing this right? No, I need that still. <laughs> All right, we need to cut first and then we're going to emboss. So here is the magic of, this is the Seaside Shells set of dies, six dies. You get this big giant one. I'm gonna cut this out of the pearlescent specialty paper. If I can find that piece hiding from me, hold on. I'm just gonna grab another one. Now, if you're gonna cut the whole thing and use the whole thing, oh, is that die from the sand? It's, Good question, Bonnie. I think you were asking about the tasteful labels one. This one is from the Sand and Sea Suite. Okay. Um, I cut this to four by six, but I think you can just barely see there's going to be some stuff hanging over the edge. For this card project, that's okay because I'm only going to be using this big giant shell, but I recommend that you actually cut this more to four and one eighth by five and three quarters. Okay. And then you can get that whole die piece there. So cutting plate should have left it right where it was grabbing that die. Now, again, we're going to have a little bit of edges cut off, but not too bad. I do wish this was just slightly narrower so we could get, um, six pieces cut out of a sheet of 12 by 12. So I'm cutting that. We're going to make a little paper mess here. I'm keeping my mess back here. But look at that piece. Okay. That's cool to begin with. Now wait until we emboss it. Static. All right. So we want to do, um, nope. <laughs> Plate number one, and I'm grabbing, where's my embossing folder? I just, oh, it's right here. <laughs> All right, here's what I did. Let me move this out of the way for a second. I want to make sure you can see this. This die is going to fit exactly over the embossing in the embossing folder. Okay. Now I had an easier time. So here's the front of the embossing folder. I had an easier time kind of laying it flat this way. I don't know why it was just easier to see the, um, indentation this way. And then I'm going to close it and I'm just going to kind of hold that firm because I don't want that to slide around. Okay. Bringing this back. So we've got number one, we're going to take that folded edge that's going to go through the machine first and then plate number four. This is needed for the 3d embossing folders. Okay. And that's going to be just the right thickness to go through the embossing machine. All right, hold on. I don't want to show you what this looks like. 
Get this guy out of the way. Okay, you ready? Oh my goodness, look at that. That's the pearlescent specialty paper. You can color it, but I think it's beautiful the way it looks. Now I have seen that you can color your cardstock with our um, champagne uh, frost, I forget what it's called, but you can get, get that pearlescent with our blending brushes. But anyways, this is beautiful. Now this perfectly fits a card front, but we're gonna, I'm gonna show you something different. I'm actually gonna fussy cut, which I don't enjoy doing, but it's really easy on this. I'm gonna fussy cut to get this big, beautiful seashell. And then I'll have all these other seashells and elements that I could use on another project. But that is such a cool technique. I love, the other thing that's cool about this suite is not only can you die cut, dry emboss, but you can also stamp all of these. So you could stamp it first, die cut it, then emboss it, and you've got ink, you've got the um, raised embossing and the die cut. Such a cool triple, what do you, what would you call that? A grand slam. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right, so I'm going to grab just a pair of paper snips, and we're just going to free this big shell, and I'm just kind of following along. Um, you'll see the indentations in the paper here. Again, I don't like fussy cutting, but this is A-OK -okay for me. Let's give this shell some freedom here. And I'm just making sure that I have smooth edges, kind of following along the parts that are not attached and kind of keeping along with the same line. Totally worth the effort on this. I'm a lazy stamper, so this is a lot of effort for me, but I know for some of you it's not at all. <laughs> How do I store my embossing folders? Great question. Um, I use the Creative Crate by Stampin' Storage. Apparently I can't cut and talk at the same time. Look at that shell. Um, I don't think, let's see if that'll come out. Maybe. No, too hard to come out. I will do a picture of what's in that drawer, but it's, um, what I love about the Stampin' Storage Creative Crates is they have a um, slanted back wall on the crate, and so the embossing folders are really easy to flip through, and I just stick the little label on them. But see, we've got all these great shells we can use for other projects. Okay, now let's finish putting our card together. Let's start by gluing this on the inside. I think very vanilla would go with this as well. I just opted for basic white. Again, liquid glue, then I can just slide things into place. I hear Lily reading books. <laughs> Lily whispers when she reads books, so we can hear her on the monitor. All right, so that's the inside. That'll be a fun little surprise. And I'm dipping into the annual catalog for the Seaside Spray Scalloped linen ribbon. I love that how well this goes with this suite because you've got that really go it's um it's linen but it looks like Sahara sand. So I'm actually just going to trim and I'm I'm looking at scallops for my marking point. Just so that fits right along that 3 and 5 eighths inch width. I've got my sentiment, we're gonna do that first. So liquid glue on that. And I'm a little bit, it's not the center, it's off to the right, I don't know, just kind of where my eye is drawn. So I've got it about the same width. Can you see that? You got the um, seaside spray, then the DSP, then about the same equal width over with the sentiment. That's just liquid glue there. I'm gonna grab tear and tape and put that on the back of the ribbon. A little trick here. And we're not using much ribbon at all. Oops. Make sure it's really burnished on that ribbon so you can get that backing off. 
And I'm gonna put this just touching, kind of straightening it out if I can. So I've got those scallops just up to the bottom of that tasteful label, okay? You'll have a little bit of fraying, but I think that that adds to the texture. Then, cleaned up my dimensionals. I'm gonna grab, I don't know, four dimensionals and throw that on the back of our shell. Oh, let's do five. No saggy shells. <laughs> Especially if this is gonna go through the mail. Gonna pop that up here. That's our popped up dimension. And then this is the twine. We used this last week, I think, from the snail mail suite. Snail mail? <laughs> Snailed it. It's the um, combo pack. This is the Blushing Bride. And I'm just gonna do a little bunny ears. That is a good question, Robin. I still have my Stampin' Up! ribbon cutting scissors, so I haven't been in the market for um, new ones, but maybe somebody, if you have a pair of ribbon scissors to the hive mind out there, um, what do you recommend for ribbon scissors? All right, I'm just tying a bow here, okay? Zhuzhing it a bit. All right, then I'm gonna pull the tails down so they're equal. We're gonna need that again. All right, and then I'm gonna grab a glue dot, but the glue dots are much bigger than the tiny little knot on the twine, so I'm kind of rolling this in thirds or onto itself. I'm gonna kind of stick the knot <laughs> to my take your pick tool. I'm gonna put that off on an angle there, okay. And then, I love these. If you participated in my paper and ribbon share, you got these for free, but these are the opal rounds, and they are just, I can't do it justice on video. They're so pretty. I'm gonna grab the larger size, maybe. Oh, <laughs> stuck to my finger. And I'm just gonna put this, doo doo doo. Just an added element to kind of draw your eye to this area. So that is the card. How, I love that. I love this blue, the seaside spray, the texture on the pearlescent specialty paper, that little tiny pop of pink, and that sentiment, love it. So here's the inside of the card. Really pretty with that stamped off seaside spray. Okay, so that's the card. Let's jump into the 3D project, which is, I'm super excited about. So I wanna give a shout out to Sally from sallystampers.com. She shared a project like this, um, double the size, okay? I pixified it, I minied it. <laughs> so this only uses a four and a half inch by six inch piece of designer series paper, which means you can get four of these out of a sheet of 12 by 12, and you'll be left with a strip that is three by 12 to use for another project, okay? But it is a little mini explosion treat holder. It's a magnetic closure, but you can obviously use um, a Velcro dot, etc. but watch how this opens. Look at that. Okay, so this has a Dove chocolate. This one that we're gonna make tonight, I'm gonna put a Hershey's nugget in there. I also know that Hershey's Kisses will fit in here, but I don't have any Hershey's Kisses in my stash. I wonder why not. <laughs> But just to show you how that kind of goes together, I've done treat holders like this before, but different shapes, not this triangular um, shape. But see, the, these will fold in. The sides are on an angle. Look at how cute that little triangle and then the little magnetic closure. Now we are using, again, the, what's the name of it? The Sand and Sea Designer Series Paper. These are actually stickers on the front. How cool is that? We got one of those um, pearlescent opal, or the opal rounds, and then again, that twine. So let me show you how easy this is to make, okay? If I can find my paper, and I don't remember what these are called. Are these sea urchins? You know how they're really cool when they're dried out and you add them to your stash? One of you will know what these are called. I don't think Sand it's sea urchins. 
Well, sand dollars are the flat ones. These are the ones that are like, they look like the paper balloons. <laughs> I don't remember what they're called, but one of you will know. And then maybe Brian will pop it up on the screen. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay. Four and a half by six. Okay. I do have a template for you for this one. On the four and a half inch side, we're going to score this at one and a half. and three. So if you want to make this larger, this is in thirds. So Sally's version, which was nine by 12, she scored it at three and six. Okay, so mine is totally in half, one and a half and three. Okay, then I'm going to rotate it to the six inch side. And we're going to score this at one and a half, three, and four and a half. So this is then in quarters. Okay, so it's four equal sides. They're one, these are basically 12, 12 one and a half inch squares. So it's pretty easy to resize this. If you wanted it to be two inch squares, you want two, four, six, eight. You want to be eight by six. Hopefully that makes sense. Did somebody say what it's called? Yeah, everybody's saying sea urchins. Are they sea urchins? I keep thinking that. Well, I guess there's different kinds of sea urchins. That would be with their spikes pulled off or something. I don't, can you tell I don't go to the beach that often? <laughs> All right, so while we are also on the six inch side, I'm gonna make a little tick mark with my stylus, or you can use a pencil if it's really difficult for you to see, which is always fun for me on live because I probably won't be able to see it, but two and a quarter. That is essentially marking the center point of this square. Okay, so two and a quarter. I'm going to then flip this and do the same thing, two and a quarter. Flipping it just means that it's going to be in those same squares, okay? So that's all we need for that. I'm going to hold on to the stylus. If you don't have your stylus from your Simply Scored, because I know some of you are out there, the Take Your Pick tool comes with a stylus attachment that has both the small end and the large end, and you would just put that, whichever end you wanted to use. I almost always use the smaller end on your take your pick tool. I'm actually gonna use it tonight, why not? So right before I went live, I couldn't find my clear ruler, so Nolan has loaned me his ruler <laughs> from his building set. I don't even know what it is. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is fold and burnish on all the score lines. This is one of those projects, like I wish we had a Stampin' Up! event in person this year. This would be what I would make for my swaps. <laughs> my I love to go to Stampin' Up! events with a whole bunch of 3D swaps. I don't expect any swaps in return. I just love to give them out. Um, and I'm trying to pay attention to where the little, I think you can see the tick mark right by my index finger there. Bringing in the template. Okay, so imagine it being here. That's where our tick mark is. I am going to score on the diagonal. Let me show you on, let's see if this ruler will work. It should work. <laughs> I'm going to score from that tick mark down to that corner of that square. We're going to score those. Okay. These other ones I'm, we're going to hand fold and I'm going to show you how we do that. I'll bring that template back in a moment. Now, can I see, I'm going to do it from this side. Pencil is probably way to go especially on this designer series paper okay creating these little diagonal lines it's a pretty handy little ruler here <laughs> Nolan said he doesn't need it for a little while so I can have it for a little while right all right, so I think you can see those diagonal score lines. Now what we're gonna do, so we've got our diagonal score lines here. Okay, so where we did those, those need to be in those two that are closer to the bottom. But now we wanna put in these score lines. Okay, and how we're gonna do that, got it like this, making sure that those diagonal score lines we just did are here. I'm gonna fold on that first score line from the right. And I think you can see got a score line here and the folded edge here. We're meeting up this score line with this folded edge. 
You can stick your fingernail there. You can put your bone folder there just to kind of mark that little corner point and just fold. I'll bring it up to the camera in just a minute. You could use a ruler and do these diagonal score lines as well, but this actually goes faster. Okay, so we've just basically created this fold line or score line. And we're just gonna kind of work our way around and just keep doing the same thing. And I kind of fold it with my fingers and then come in and burnish. Okay, so see how we're putting those diagonal folds in there. Now on this one, we're not doing it to this front square, we're doing it to the one right behind it. Because we're gonna actually end up cutting away those front squares. And when you have the paper in front of you, this will make, it'll, it'll look a lot easier than it may look on camera. Okay, so we've kind of got it like this. Now, these two squares we don't need, so I'm gonna come in with my paper snips and remove them on whichever side I can see the score lines the best. I am just cutting like right up the score line, right down the middle. Do I have, ever have problems with paper crap cracking? I do not Colorado creating. Um, and I don't know if, I, I exclusively use Stampin' Up! paper and I haven't had issues with it cracking. Sometimes um, the cause of that could be either the quality of the paper that you're using or you may be scoring a little bit too hard. So try scoring a little bit lighter and making sure that you're, when you create the valley with the score line, folding away from the score line, turning that uh, valley score line into a mountain fold. I <laughs> hope that makes sense. All right, so we're gonna round the two corners. I'm already excited for when I can get together in person with demos to make these boxes. This is, it's funny, each time I do um, a new tree box, it becomes one of my favorites. So we've just rounded the corners and to make that easy, I just folded on that edge. So we have sort of that straight edge there and that helps to get it right in the detailed trio punch. One of my favorite punches that I cannot live without. All right, so starting to form this together, we've, we're kind of folding those two to the back. These two will fold to the front and then you kind of have a box, but then I'm just pressing in and those score lines we made, hopefully, will start to fold. Now we're gonna come in and burnish those, but it should start to go right on the score lines that we made, okay? So now I'm gonna kinda flip this out because that is the easiest way to get in and get those burnished. Burnishing them are really gonna help this go together much better. So see how those are going the opposite direction there? Just be gentle with your paper and make sure you can just get right in there and burnish. Now, this is the outside, right? <laughs> but we wanted to make sure that those folded in. So again, those two go to the back, these two go to the front, and then this is gonna pinch together like so. Now there's one thing that I, w I decided to do after the fact and I should have done it while we were scoring, is I'm actually gonna do one more tiny little score line with this tab to the right. I'm gonna just come in and score this at four and five eighths. What that's gonna do, and I didn't add that to my template now that I see that, but see that little extra eighth of an inch? That's gonna help this tab fold over all the paper, the exploding paper. <laughs> Then we'll fold and burnish on that. And now let's have some fun. There's the template. This will be on my blog. Here's the timeline of events. The card will post to my blog tomorrow. The 3D exploding triangular treat holder or whatever I'm gonna call it will post to my blog on Friday with a shortened YouTube tutorial and a picture of this template so that you can recreate it on your own. I know some of you won't be able to wait till Friday and I'll get pictures of what you've made already. So I'm gonna grab two um, neodymium magnets. Now you'll see I've kind of got two sizes here. I bought a lot of magnets at some point. These smaller ones I ordered from Total Element, which I highly recommend. They're a US company 
and they're linked on my favorites page at the paperpixie.com slash favorites. These are 1 32nd inch in um, thickness and a quarter of an inch big. Now the other ones that are a little bit bigger were highly recommended by Poodles. They came from Spider Magnets, which is a UK company on eBay. Would plastic snaps work? Yes, I think they would, Patty. Also, um, a Velcro disc as well. So this is just an, another option. I think I did Velcro, or maybe it was a magnet the last time I did a closure. I can't remember. So I'm going to grab one of these and my glue dots. Here they are. I'm sticking one to the glue dot. I want to say these magnets from Total Element are $14.99 for 200. If you want to go up to the 3 8 of an inch, you actually get 100 for around that price. So it's half. I don't have my take your pick tool ready. Um, so I like the quarter of an inch one. So I'm grabbing that magnet, which I stuck to my, a glue dot, and I'm going to put this, oh, I don't know, I'm 3 8 of an inch, maybe a little more in that square here. This is on the inside, okay? Let's go ahead and fold this again. Get that ready to go. And then I'm gonna take the other magnet and drop it. Do you see that? I love, this is my favorite part of the magnets. It goes right where it needs to go, the right positive and negative, and right in the right spot. So I'm gonna grab another glue dot. This can sometimes be a little tricky getting the glue dot to stick to that outside magnet. Please work with me. Oh. <laughs> last time was Velcro. It was Velcro last time. <laughs> My little researcher over here. Yeah, that glue dot didn't work. Hold on. That one more time. Oh, geez. <laughs> okay. So now what we can do is get the top ready to go first. Again, we've got that eighth of an inch, and then we're just going to press down and pick up that magnet. Like so. And now that's going to hold itself together. How cute is that? Look at that. And it'll explode when it opens. Yay. I love that noise. Can you hear that? <laughs> Um, all right, so let me show you how to put the Hershey's nugget in there. You want it to be in portrait, okay? Because if you turn it in landscape, the sides of this fold in too much. So portrait, it will fit. Um, a dove promise fits perfectly in the bottom there. Hershey's kiss, kisses, you name it, okay? So let's go ahead and close this and let's, um, we're gonna, I'm gonna open it again in a second to do the twine. But there's that. Let me show you with the stickers. You get three sheets of stickers. So again, think making multiples because these are so cute. You get the starfish, the conch shell, and the scallop. I think I got those right. We're going to stamp right onto the scallop with the for you sentiment. Now on my sample, I used Memento Tuxedo Black ink. It looked a little bit gray, but I thought, well, let's try it with Knight of Navy. The for you just barely fits on the scallop. There we go. Okay. Now that's a sticker with a little bit of a pearlescent sheen. So I'm going to give that a second to dry. Let's do a little collage of stickers here. I love this because this is so quick and easy. We'll do this one kind of off to the upper left. Stick that right on there. I don't even need to pull out my adhesive for this. In fact, there is no adhesive except for the glue dots and whatever's on the back of these stickers. <laughs> this one, stick that right on. And now, oh, these stickers are so cute. I don't know, can you see that sheen if I catch the light there? And anything you stamp on there is gonna be a little bit muted. I'm going to grab one of the smaller opal rounds, kind of pop that off to the lower right there, and then let's add a little twine bow. 
this is why we need to open it just one more time, just briefly, just to get that twine right underneath that flap. And then we can go ahead and tie a bow. Now this would be really cute. You could add like a double twine for a little handle for a little mini handbag or something like that. That would be cute. Let's go ahead and tie a bow. I'm gonna use my reverse tweezers, which are linked on my favorites page as well. This is my third hand usually. That just kind of holds that knot in place. And then we'll tie a bow. And this little bow just kind of ties the two projects together. Now we'll just zhuzh the bow. I'm gonna have to get Google Translator out for some of the comments I see. I love it, we're so international. All right, let's get that loop it's kind of twisting on me there. We'll have a little crazy bow on this one. What do you use for embellishments? Great question. So all of Stampin' Up's adhesive embellishments are all different sizes, which the little crafting OCD in me has a hard time with. So I just cut a backing from our designer series paper to four by six. I, and this is just for the adhesive backed embellishments. I adhere that to the four by six card, add a label, and these are Avery Passport vinyl envelopes, okay? The tweezers are reverse tweezers. These ones are by EK Tools. You can find them at thepaperpixie.com slash favorites. I linked them in my favorites list. Love these and I probably am gonna get another pair just so I'd never lose them. But here is our cute little treat holders. This one has a Dove Promise, Hershey's Nugget. And then we've got our card. This is from the Sand and Sea product suite. So the card will post in my blog in tomorrow's blog post. If you're not already following my blog, thepaperpixie.com, you can subscribe at thepaperpixie.com slash subscribe, and you'll get an email each time I publish a new post so you don't miss a thing. Then the 3D project in a shortened YouTube tutorial will post on Friday's blog post, okay? Now, we're gonna do prize patrol. You're probably your favorite part of the evening. Drum roll. Our winners from last week, are have won the january 2021 paper pumpkin so congratulations to connie hart and diane nelson congratulations ladies to claim your prize patrol this is for the winners you'll go to the paperpixie.com slash prize patrol and then i'll get these in the mail to you okay the sooner the better because this is like a valentine themed box Tonight's prize patrol is, I've got, I'm gonna choose two winners. I've got two sets of these, the Dandy Garden Designer Series Paper and the Mossy Meadow Braided Linen Trim. Here's how we do this. So this is for US residents only. I only ship within the US and I'm sorry about that. But to enter to win, and really quick caveat, if you're watching this on YouTube, you need to leave this comment for prize patrol in the comments of the video, not the live chat. Facebook viewers, just leave it in the comments. I will choose a winner, win, two winners next Wednesday. You just have to leave in the comments, hashtag prize patrol, check your spelling, no spaces, and make sure that you leave this comment only on the videos from the live broadcast. You can leave it if it's the replay, but I did have a few comments on the pre-recorded video. You just wanna make sure you leave it on either the YouTube live or the YouTube live replay or the Facebook Live or the Facebook Live replay. That's, they're all the same video, just all the, or <laughs> it's the same video that if you're watching it live, you just anyways, leave the comment at the um, in the comments, hashtag prize patrol, no spaces. I'll choose winners next Wednesday and announce them on next Wednesday's Facebook Live, which will be 8 p.m. Eastern time next Wednesday. I think you know how to do this. Let's see. I'll probably be seeing all the hashtag prize patrol. Make sure there's no spaces. I see a couple spaces. Make sure you leave it without the space. I wanna make sure that everybody that wants to enter to win gets successfully entered. So thank you all so much for joining me tonight. Let me take this off, let's see, and flip the camera. I appreciate you joining me live. Thanks to those of you that are watching the replay. I'll see you next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time for my next 
well, I can't say weekly Wednesday Facebook Live. That's what it used to be called for I don't know how many episodes, but <laughs> a few years worth of episodes. Live with the Paper Pixie. Don't forget it's Celebration. Celebration ends February 28th. You've got the Hey Chick Bundle and the Hey Birthday Chick Bundle that launched yesterday. Reach out with any questions. You can always reach me at julie at thepaperpixie.com or at thepaperpixie.com and leave me um, a message on my contact form. Have a wonderful and blessed week and I will see you next Wednesday. Take care. Bye.